thoroughly sick and tired of being welcomed to my own country. You see, I was under the impression that every citizen is equal in this country and you're as entitled to see this land as yours, whether you were born here or migrated. Certainly the colour of your skin and your ancestry wasn't going to determine the value of your citizenship. But such notions have been disregarded as the Albanese government, together with the corporate elite, try to enshrine racial privilege into the constitution. And one of the corporates heavily backing the race-based referendum is Qantas. <coughs> this week, the airline, which received around $2.7 billion of taxpayer-funded subsidies during the pandemic, stepped up its support for the race-based referendum. Outgoing CEO Alan Joyce stood next to the Prime Minister and announced even more corporate largesse for the cashed-up Yes23 campaign, including giving activists free flights to spread the message across the country and painting three planes with the Yes23 logo. These aircraft will cover a huge amount of the country. Every major city, every major town will get to see this message, which is fantastic. What a sort of profound corporate idiocy would motivate any business to so loudly back a contentious, divisive, race-based proposal that is floundering in the polls? We've had four major polls in the past month, all showing the same thing. The latest, commissioned by the nine papers, showed the yes vote plummeting further nationally, trailing the no vote 46% to 54%. Why are corporates like Qantas wanting to disaffect more than half the population? One could be forgiven for believing there are other motivations at play for Qantas beyond vacuous corporate virtue signalling on a matter that has nothing to do with the aviation industry. It was only a couple of months ago that the Albanese government rejected Qatar Airways' request for more Australian routes that would have disrupted Qantas's grip on landing rights and expose the flying kangaroo to some much needed competition. Australians pay too much, way too much for airfares and in recent years we've become accustomed to budget service at enormous prices, not to mention all that political grandstanding that's shoved down your throat. Qatar's bid had the backing of state premiers and tourism operators. It would have seen an enormous boost to international tourism as well as lowering prices for domestic travellers. Earlier this month, industry modelling revealed that the decision to block, block Qatar's bid will cost the Australian economy more than $500 million a year in lost tourism revenue. The only beneficiary of this boneheaded decision appears to be, you guessed it, Qantas. Also earlier this month, you may recall Qantas and Alan Joyce were widely mocked for offering Anthony Albanese's 23-year-old <laughs> son membership to the ultra-exclusive Chairman's Lounge. Now, normally only the captains of industry, A-list celebrities and federal politicians can access chairmans, but somehow a university student was deemed worthy. That seems normal. Now, I would never, I would never suggest there was a quid pro quo in any of these arrangements, but one can understand why many people believe that to be so. Qantas is no longer the spirit of Australia. It is a substandard service charging premium rates protected from market forces by a government-backed oligopoly. It would be wonderful if the incoming CEO, Vanessa Hudson, could focus her energies on restoring the airline to its former glory and, I don't know, leave the empty moral posturing to the politicians.